I guess we'll just take questions. We the other games four games four days ago, <laughs> uh, so we're second day into preparation with A and M, and so yes, that's where our focus is now. All right, any questions? Just as you've uh, prepared for this team, and kind of what are your first impressions of A and M? How do they compare to like a like a Texas that you saw in the Alamo Bowl, and uh, what do they look like compared to teams you've seen around here? Hmm. They're they're a talented team, just like. Uh, you know, we saw Texas in the, in the Alamo Bowl. They they got really good skill. They got good uh, offensive and defensive linemen. So the good team speed. You know, all those things that you would expect a you know program like this to be. So it's a you know we have a, a really good opportunity in front of us. A great challenge for our, our young people. And you know, as you know, we're still uh, bringing things moving forward. And, and this is really a, a great uh, opportunity for us to to get out there and compete and. And go for a for a victory. Coach, what's been your message to uh, Brendan Lewis this week? Obviously, a much bigger stage he'll be he'll be stepping into, and in you know, much higher quality defense he'll be going against. You know, probably in his mind, the bigger stage was, was yesterday or or Friday because it was his first start. You know, it was playing at home. It was a really good crowd. By the way, our fans were awesome, by the way, um, especially our student section. They did a tremendous job. But um, I, I think he probably would have uh, bigger jitters in that first one because of his first start than the second one. And, you know, just knowing what he's done and what his body of work has been since, uh, you know, since he played in our bowl game, he came in in a, in a difficult situation and, and created a spark for us. And, you know, I think with, with the game under his belt now and he kind of has uh, – Knows what it feels like to be a starter now, so I think he can just settle in and play. and And I thought he played well, you know, even in the game, uh, you know, last week he took care of the football. He didn't throw it, uh, you know, any errant passes. If he didn't like any of the progressions, he, you know, got away to, you know, you know, he got the ball out of the out of bounds or threw it away. And you know, and that's what you have to do with a young quarterback. Sometimes that's hard to train, you know, for a young quarterback. He thinks he can make every play, and I think from that standpoint, he showed a level of you know, really decision making that was that was pretty good. Now, obviously, he's got a lot of stuff to clean up, and he knows that. And you know, watching the tape, and you know, he he feels that there, we left some plays on the field for sure. But I thought overall, though, he played pretty well. Coach, have all the details with Mustafa Johnson's situation been ironed out yet? Do you know when he might be able to suit up for you guys? He uh, he's been reinstated, and uh, so he's been he's been cleared to start uh, physical activity right now. So that's that's kind of where he's at. So he'll start the practice regimen. We just got clearance today, actually, about him being able to start practice. And you know, there's a acclimatization period that he needs to go through. That a lot of our players that when they begin practice that he has to do. Um, there's also you know part of the stipulation of his reinstatement that he's got to serve as well. So. You know, he's just going to get himself in shape and, and help our team be better. And and when he's when he's uh, you know when he's eligible to play, you know, after he you know serves his uh, you know is is some type of uh, I would say I guess a suspension, you know, just from the amateurism and professionalism is, issue. As soon as he uh, is able to alleviate that, you know, he'll be ready to play. But, you know, he's going to have some time to get himself in shape. And, you know, he's excited. Our team's excited he's back. And I'm excited. So it's a, you know, we feel he's going to really help us when we get into the meat of our season. Coach, uh, we didn't see Robert Barnes against UNC. Is there anything you can share with us regarding his status? And do you expect him to be available this weekend against the Aggies? We do expect him to be available this weekend. Um, he had a soft tissue injury that we, you know, we didn't feel it was warranted enough for him to play in the first one. So, uh, but he will be ready to go for this one. Uh, kind of on that same note, any update on Frank Phillip and where he's at in his recovery? Frank is doing awesome. He's doing a great job. He's ahead of schedule. Um, you know, I, I think uh, the initial prog, uh, you know, when we were projecting when he would be back, they thought it'd be somewhere, you know, at the start of the conference season. But it, there's a chance that he may get a chance to play earlier. So he is practicing. He is doing uh, some getting back into doing the individual and doing some stuff with the line. So again, he has to go through that period of acclimatization as well, you know, to to get himself ready. So he'll have uh, you know some time to do that. But you know, we think he's really close. Um, Carl, 
When you come out of a first game, I'm sure you have a to-do list, things you got to clean up. Where is getting your receivers more involved on that list? You talked about Brendan made a lot of good decisions, not forcing stuff, but at the same point, in a game like the game coming up, you got to figure guys like Dimitri, Brendan, Levante, et cetera, need to get more involved. Where's that process at? It's it's still moving forward. <laughs> you know, it, it, it really ties, you know, all in with the, you know, the guy that's really throwing the football versus – and and you know he's going to get better, and and I, I believe our receivers are going to be there for him when when those things occur too. We just you know we threw the ball 15 times. It wasn't a lot of throws, um, and, and I think you know we left some plays out there in those 15 times. So we just have to get that timing you know continually worked on as we progress through the the weeks of practice and training, and and uh, I, I feel those things are really going to come along. Uh, you know, pretty soon here. Hey, Carl. Um, you talked a lot about the need to, I guess, improve your team's discipline after the game on Saturday. I guess, what does that look like for you, and how important will that be heading into, you know, a top ten game on Saturday? Really important because we can't afford to to put give. You know, this is the type of game field position is going to be critical. Uh, we got to take advantage of opportunities when we get it. Uh, we got to be able to. Um, you know, get get their offense off the field uh, so that we can have opportunities to score. So, you know, those things are going to be critical in this game. And and the the fashion of things that we did last week was was not acceptable. So we know that. You know, we've talked about that as a team. Uh, we understand what those issues are, and particularly in games like like this one that's coming up. We, you know, they can hurt you, and they could be the difference of losing games if you don't take the care of those things. So we did address it. I think they understand it, and we move forward. Uh, Coach, last week you were able to get in a number of your younger guys towards the end of the game. Brian Williams on the DL, and at one point your entire secondary was made up of freshmen. Do you feel like you you got a bit more of an enhanced look at the depth on your team in some certain areas? And just how do you see that depth progressing now that you have had a chance to see some of those young guys take some snaps? It was encouraging. You know, those young guys that did get a chance to play on both sides of the ball, I felt that they played and competed pretty well. I feel good about the depth. It's a young depth, but it's it's for their first time getting on the field uh, on a college game. It was, I think they, they had passing grades with what they've done. I think the secondary played well and played and played uh, pretty well in some tough circumstances in the red zone or getting close to the red zone and keeping them out. I, I believe it was invaluable experience for those guys to get a chance to get their feet wet. I remember my first time stepping on a, on a field too in my college game and there's jitters and all those things, but you know, after five or six plays, you kind of get settled in and, and, and everything uh, is about what you would expect. So I felt those guys did a nice job and, and we'll continue to, when we get opportunities like that, to keep bringing them along to get them some more experience. Carl, with a game like this, are you one that likes to tell your team it's just another football game? Or do you want to embrace the, the human nature that they're going to build it up in their minds a little bit, that it's an NFL stadium, it's a top 10 team, there's a great opportunity here? I mean, how do you, you know, go about All right those things you team? just said I, is the things we say. It's a great opportunity. It's a, it's a highly ranked team that's been successful for several years. Um, it's it's a great measuring stick for us uh, to to compete at you know w with a ranked opponent. You know I think those are really really great challenges that you want to have your team face. You know and uh, right, wrong or indifferent, those are those are the opportunities that we want to get ourselves to be in. You know week in and week out. So we're we're embracing that. You know we're embracing the challenge of what this is going to be. And you know we know we have to play well. And we know we can't have the, you know, the penalties that we talked about, you know, last week. That would be a difference in a game like this. So, our our kids are excited. You know, our players are excited about this this opportunity to play and compete. And and uh, I know our guys will be ready to play. They'll compete hard. Uh, we expect to make great plays. We expect to do some really good things in this game. And and bottom line, we're going to have to go and execute and do that to, for us to win. You had some different guys rotating in on the offensive line against UNC. Would you? Ideally, like to get to a set five, or could you see a rotation going up front uh, here going forward? There'll be some rotation because some of the guys that are that are kind of doubled up in spots are pretty close. You know, it's like one A and one B, so someone has to start the game, right? And so that's we we start that way, but we still feel like the guys that are in the one B category they've earned some right some uh, some. I guess some the work that they put in to to play as well. So we feel very confident with some of those scenarios that particularly on the offensive line. So, 
you know, we, we want the uh, you know, we want those guys playing. You know, we know that this game, injuries occur a lot, right? This is a physical game, and, you know, we want to have as number of guys as, as ready to play as possible just because of, you know, that very thing. Carl, you uh, obviously have some history with the Broncos organization. Any extra meeting for you this week, uh, being able to lead your team out on that field? Yeah, great memories. Uh, you know, with uh, back then that was in Vesco Field <laughs> at Mal High. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a. I'm excited. It's a great stadium. I loved uh, when I was with the Broncos. You know, coaching for that organization, such a great organization, and and playing in that stadium, great fans, all those things. So we, I have a lot of great memories of really great games that played in that stadium. So it's going to be great for our players to. You know, particularly the new guys that haven't been in a stadium like that to play and compete. And uh, there's some guys that I know, some of our older players, like Nate, I'm sure has probably played there before when, we, when Colorado State was the opponent. But, you know, it's always a special feeling to play in this stadium. So uh, our guys will, you know, we're excited about it. Carl, you were actually uh, coaching in the first game at that stadium. That yeah. That was on September 10th. Yeah, and this will be the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Obviously, the next morning we know what happened. Ed McCaffrey got hurt mm-hmm. in that game. What are your memories as, as you look back at that first game and just kind of everything that, evolved, that you know, went on over the next uh, few days and weeks? And as, you, as we celebrate, not celebrate, but honor the 20th anniversary. Well, it's it's interesting you you mentioned that because yeah it was it was a you know our first game of the year that season in in two thousand and one um, and you know so it was a very big game played against uh, the Giants and you know my my counterpart that I just played last week was one of my receivers and he got hurt in that game where he, he broke his leg and so it, it was you know it was bittersweet we won the game but it was bittersweet you know about that that you know that scenario but. Um, but most of my memories and thoughts about that that stadium has always been very very positive. And you know, with with this circumstance, uh, I'm glad we're honoring the, you know the, you know all the service people that you know the things that they sacrificed and the people that you know that done a heroic things to. In that's in those scenarios uh, back then, it was. I just remember uh, the day after when you were watching. Uh, the newscast when it was live and we didn't see the first plane hit, you know, the, the the tower, but we were actually looking live and we saw the second plane out of the background came and hit the tower and, you know, we're in our Denver offices and it was like, did I just see that? And and that's where it was, you know, I think it was uh, very, very um, emotionally a concern, you know, for all of us, you know, across the country. So, I mean, we all know what the ramifications is, what happened, but but when you see that part of it, you know, the live, particularly the second plane when it hit, um, we all felt like, wow, we're under attack. We are, you know. So it was it's very emotional uh, across the country, as we all remember. So uh, this is great to, to continue to, to bring this forward and not forget, you know, all the people that you know, obviously were, lost their lives and some that sacrificed themselves trying to save others. All right, thanks. We'll go quick to the Zoom. Troy, is there anything in the Zoom? Any questions? You're not on. Are you, are you muted, Troy? All right, well, we'll just we'll leave it there, Coach. Okay. So thanks for the week. All right, thank you, guys. Good luck this weekend.